Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a comprehensive guide on a new deck that has came out from the festival collection and that is Willista. Probably one of the best decks going into the BCS season at the moment. So definitely a deck to cover and this might just be a deck that will get you your world's invite. And BCS season is coming up. So if you guys need any coaching, feel free to hit me up on Metafy. My link is in the description below. Feel free to book a session and we'll get started. Willista is a pretty, you know, easy deck to kind of uh, play. Uh, very, very straightforward deck. Um, yeah, the deck itself before was missing a lot of things, and I think the new festival collection just kind of gave it everything that it wanted. So we're starting off with the ride line. So the ride line is the Willista ride line. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. You can change the starter to whichever one you want. Um, but essentially, the grade one when this unit is rode upon, uh, you just you put a card from your hand into soul and then search for a gem. The gem card now counts as both Ruby and Sapphire, which makes this deck super crazy, get, getting both effects off um, on a card that needs uh, one or the other or both to be activated. And then your grade two. The grade two is actually really important uh, because of essentially the number that it makes with the gem. So 13K actually is really, really awkward for your opponent to kind of guard in the early stages of the game. And the moment you play the gem, your uh, your Vanguard essentially gains plus five because of the gem itself, um, but also you get to draw one, which is really, really handy. And then this new uh, Festive Magicka will list us pretty much when it's placed on the Vanguard circle. You discard a card from your hand, search for your soul or drop for a gem and add it to hand. Soul Blast one gem from, yeah, well, from your soul. <laughs> uh, and then activate essentially both ability because your gem counts as both Ruby and Sapphire. So she gains plus 15 and then top five call two, really, really strong. Uh, yeah, that that effect is actually pretty nuts. Um, yeah, it's a really, really solid card. Um, again, we'll play three uh, more Willisters for Persona. Persona is actually really, really important in this deck. Missing one turn of Persona Ride actually could be very detrimental to your game plan. Um, just because like all your rear guards restand and of course, you know, you if you miss Persona Ride, then your power level actually drops by a lot. Um, but not only that, you actually miss out on a draw one from Persona Ride. You're fetching a gem, and then the gem essentially turns into a card in hand, like another card in hand. Uh, and then also you miss out on the plus two, so you actually miss out on heaps of advantage. So yeah, Persona Ride is super, super important, um, but I don't think we have enough to play the... Um, the chalice because we're already playing another order uh during our main phase and then the next card is for ophelia ophelia is essentially your re-standard this card is a 13 by itself after your vanguard attacks you can count plus one bottom deck a back row rig up behind your vanguard circle re-stand it and then yeah essentially plus 15. so this card uh goes from 13 to 28 or 23 to 38 really really strong strong numbers uh, for multi-attacking. Then just looking at some of the other stuff that we're running, so the grade twos. The first grade two we run is four of the Cycler card. This card is actually pretty cracked. Uh, it essentially gives uh, Persona Ride one and a half Persona Rides. So essentially when you're Persona Riding, when it's placed on Riga, kind of us one, give your Vanguard the effect that all front row units gain plus five, which essentially is half a Persona Ride and it's for the turn. So any new unit that comes, um, yeah, it's just a blanket effect to the front row. And then in the early stages of the game, this card is actually really useful because essentially when you discard it for ride deck, um, you can solve plus one bottom deck and draw a card. But also like when you discard it off Willista, it counts as well. Uh, so pretty much when you ride Willista, you can discard this and then solve plus one and draw a card. Really, really strong because this card essentially trades itself for any other copy of the card or of any other card in the deck. Um, so yeah, very, very helpful and it works at all stages of the game in comparison to some of the other cycler cards uh, only working during a ride phase. So yeah, very, very strong. And then the next card we run is Fall Romana. So you can actually swap one of these to Trixie. Uh, Trixie is the one where it searches top five or top seven for two listers of, of different card names. Um, Trixie is pretty useful just because you can find like your Persona rides, um, but I think I'm playing full Romana because I want like super consistency in the early game. So pretty much you drop this down, it becomes two 20k bidders in the front row, and then if you boost it by eight like with a Yuika, it's 28, and then if you're boosting by Yuika, 
this means that you bounce this card and this card is protected for the next turn. Uh, really, really strong day two came out in the first set. Um, definitely a staple in this deck. Um, and a lot of decks now die to early rush or can't really cope with the early rush. Uh, so if you are putting on, you know, 20k lines on grade two, it's actually pretty insane. Then just jumping into the other stuff. So we're running three PGs, one um, Elementaria. Uh, just like every other deck would if you don't have that then you can search it for the unit pg there's actually a discussion where you would you actually run a fourth one because you know if you put the pg in front of uh, a yuika you can actually bounce it back to hand so you can search it off the willister uh, call out the pg into the front row and then bounce it uh, so yeah there's discussion for that but you know uh, guard guard restrict is a thing in this meta game and yeah that's just super duper important then we run four of uh, Elvira, uh, essentially a draw one uh, the moment you play Everlasting Sapphire, which is your gem. Uh, and yeah, this card is just super crazy. You place it down, you place it um, before you use your gem and then you draw. And then if your opponent can't get rid of this, you're just eternally drawing forever. Uh, really, really strong because then you can start drawing into like your affiliates, your cycle cards for the next turn, your 20k beaters, really, really strong. Then we're running three Yuika, only three, just because uh, there's actually very limited slots in this deck. Uh, I think Elvira is just way more, how should I say, important uh, in terms of her role in this deck. So we play three Yuika, really good early game because you can essentially place it uh, in the back row and then protect anything in the front row after it attacks because you can solve us one, bounce it back to hand. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it just makes really, really nice numbers, 20. 20 plus 8 plus 5 is 33 without Persona Ride, which is abs absolutely crazy. You pop a trigger and that's 43. Really, really strong. And then I said it before, and we're playing four gems. Uh, this gem counts as both Ruby and Sapphire. Essentially, when you play it, uh, put into Soul, draw a card, and your Vanguard gain plus 5. And then if your uh, Vanguard is grade 3, or if your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, then essentially after, well, when your Vanguard attacks, you can Soul Blast one Grade 3 Willista and stand a Rearguard. Really, really strong because then this deck now has a five attack instead of four attacks with Ophelia. Um, so you're not, you know, always wanting double Ophelia on the board. Uh, so you can restand, you know, your PGs, your 20k beaters. Um, I guess your restanding attackers that have a bit more oomph. Um, so yeah, really, really strong. Pretty much if this card never existed, uh, Willister wouldn't be a deck at all. Just because it counts as both um, Ruby and Sapphire means that uh, Ophelia gets both effects. Um, yeah, she gains the draw and then sometimes it was really hard because you had to choose one or the other. Um, so yeah, really, really strong. And then for the triggers. So for this profile, I'm only running like vanilla triggers. So I'm only running four heals now there is a discussion where you run two crit heals and two of the normal heals uh if your meta is full of willister you might want to run the restand heals as well um, but i think gandiva is the big boogeyman of the format at the moment really really strong deck um so i think yeah just having you know access to a crit heal is really strong um but otherwise yeah if your meta is full of restanders then yeah the restand heal is actually uh, pretty useful and then eight crits so i play eight vanilla crits and the reason being is that usually i want to recycle this behind the vanguard and if i'm putting a 5k then it feels pretty good because then my vanguard is hitting what uh 15 28 33 and then with the boost is 38 uh 48 on persona ride so those are like magic numbers if i place a 4k with the effect then it feels pretty bad but there is merit for running the crit, the effect crit, because it has an effect where it goes into soul, and soul is a pretty prime resource in this deck. So if you're, you know, running out of soul, then might pose a problem. Um, but yeah, and then we play three fronts. This deck draws insane amounts. Pretty much if you have Elvira on the board, um, so I wouldn't even bother going with draws, um, and just because you know you're could potentially deck out. But yeah. Now, the last thing is the OT. So there's a discussion where, do you run this OT or the new blue OT? So the new blue OT is uh, essentially when you check it, you can salvage any card in the bin and add it to hand. The good thing about that OT is that you can search for, you know, extra PGs. Um, if you soul charge this somehow or whatever, then you can recoup it back. 
Persona Rise is really important. Ophelia is important, especially if you play against like control decks. Um, so yeah, you can play the blue OT. You can also play the lyrical OT. If you check lyrical OT earlier, then it just makes this deck absolutely unstoppable. Um, just makes your numbers super, super strong. But yeah, I'm playing this because uh, it's SP. Uh, but yeah, either OT is um, quite worthy in that spot. So I guess some changes that you could probably make to this deck. Um, you could change the Romana into the Trixie, as I said before, if you find that you are missing, you know, your Willisters and you need a way to, I guess, um, find Persona Rides. So Trixie is good. Another card that you could probably include is the Grade 3 Cycler card. Uh, the one where it uh, bottoms decks this and then um, multi calls. The good thing about that is is essentially it's another copy of Ophelia where you can place it in the opposite side of the Cycler card. So that means that you're actually playing five multi attackers. Um, but yeah, like other than that, it's just an extender, nothing too crazy. Um, I guess if you're on a budget, then you can probably like. Uh, drop down the Cycler card and then um, play more of the um, the Trixies. But I feel that this deck is just so uh, cookie cutter that it just does what it does. And you know, why fix something when it's not broken, right? So yeah, this is pretty much the deck list, um, how it is and how I would build it for the BCS season. Uh, sorry if it cuts on the side here. Um, but yeah, now, Let's talk about this deck and how the metagame is at the moment. Uh, Gandiva is obviously the best deck um, at the moment. And actually this deck is equally best deck with uh, Gandiva, I think. Gandiva itself, um, it kind of ha has to build up. So it has the same Eva treatment as Eva was before in the Eva Jet meta, where if you're playing a faster deck, then you can actually beat it quicker. And it's not like Gandiva has big hand anyways. The good thing about this deck is that it actually frees a lot of slots on the board. So the remaining cards on the board are usually like your back rear guard um, back row circles. So the boosters, uh, because you're clearing up the middle column, right? Uh, the, the back row middle rear guard column because you're bottom decking with uh, Ophelia. And then if you have double Yuka, then you just bounce the Yuka back. Uh, so yeah. Essentially, you're dealing with like two back row boosters and the best thing about that is that they are the same grade. The fact that they are the same grade means that Gandiva has to have another spot retire to effectively use best harvest. And if they're getting nothing out of best harvest, then it's not really good for them. Uh, sure, you know, they retire one, they draw one with Gandiva's like um, main skill. But as you drop their hand, this deck just overpowers it because of how how high the power level is for this deck. You know, you're hitting 33s, you're hitting 38s. Like, it's actually incredible, right? So the more pressure that you put on in the early game, the better. Especially if you're going first. If you're going first, you just like drop Romana, drop a Yui card, drop an Elvira, drop, like, I don't know, a Cycle card or something. And, and then you essentially get it back, right? Um, you refund it all back. Um, let's just say, you know, you find, um, I don't know, uh, the cycle card, you intercept it off and then you push the uh, Elvira up and then you put the Yui card. So you're essentially freeing up slots on the board, which is really important into Gandiva. Um, other notable decks is Minerva. I know Minerva just got the new PR, but I think we have to wait for another set before they get their grade one. Uh, the grade one makes that deck super crazy, but I might as well just put it out there now. That deck is very, very consistent. And I think this deck, as consistent as this deck is, um, I don't think it beats the consistency of Minerva just because it has access to everything in every zone. Um, so yeah, definitely look out for that once it comes up. Um, another deck that is quite prominent at the moment is Jet. Jet obviously hasn't changed, um, but I think Jet is slightly slower than this just because it hits smaller numbers, whereas this one hits bigger numbers. And I think that's really impactful because essentially if you're playing Jet and you're getting a GG, that one card that you get off GG is just not going to cut it, especially against a deck like this where it hits 20, 28, um, very, very strong. Um, another deck that is really good at the moment is Eva. Um, Eva with the um, uh, ha ha Habitual Zone, uh, that the, the Cycle card essentially, um, really fixes that deck. 
it makes it so that um, you know you're drawing in the early game to stabilize uh, which was something that Eva didn't have before um, Eva also runs the one off boosting order which means that they can start calling stuff to the uh, the front row without you know over placing the obscadades so essentially you're never killing their board because they have retire protection um, and they're attacking with boost now so their rear guards actually get much much bigger um, so yeah as long as you're you know hitting big hitting early this is the deck and you'll be fine you'll, you'll be cruising through those matchups um, so yeah that's pretty much how the deck goes we'll go through some of I guess the lines of play uh, it's pretty simple but yeah let's show you anyways all right so to start off we have obviously the grade zero uh, and in your deck in your hand in the early game you obviously want to find certain cards uh, depending on your matchup these are like the priority of cards that I would keep uh, and you know there, there are some cards that you know you can mold back or whatever um, but I think these these five are like probably the biggest five cards that you could keep essentially when you ride up to grade three you want to have double gem um, one either in soul or in hand uh, generally the one that you use early is already in soul um, so you're like pretty happy with that being there um, the good thing about uh, the Great 3 Willista is that you can still play with one because essentially you played this early right uh, and then you ride up you discard something and then you grab this back um, which is you know really accessible so essentially you you always have to find the gem uh, the one gem because the other gem will come from the ride line uh, so you actually only need the one gem now depending on your matchup obviously then you're wanting to find Romana Romana is essentially a card that helps you push in the early game you know you're um, busting out like 20k's 20k rear guards um, after you play your gem really really important um, and then Vashel Bland Vashel Bland uh, so the cycler card uh, always good so if you find this you keep it because you're essentially ditching it for ride line anyways and you're trading this card for wh whatever other card that you draw um, so very strong and then Persona Ride. Persona Ride is really important but I think it's the least important out of all of these because you have just so much draw so much so many ways to find to find it essentially so pretty much when you ride to grade 3 you can search like the Willis to offer and then bounce it with like the Yuika um, that's like a pretty important play in this deck I think uh, because if you don't find your Persona Rides then it feels pretty bad um, other cards that you can find is like Elvira but I think Elvira you don't need it too early i think the the role of elvira in comparison to like yuika is like uh much lower so i think yuika actually comes way before um elvira um, but yeah these are like your priorities so if i had to like rate the the cycle card and the romano i think is like at the front and then your third your, your second gem and then your persona rides then yuika then elvira um, because essentially if you have like dirt cards in your hand like really bad cards then your card is not that great if you don't have you know your gems then Elvira is not that great either um, so yeah you know you pick and choose see what you like um, but yeah these are like the priorities from left to right um, of what you want to mulligan now let's just say you know you're playing through your turn you draw your, your card um, and then you discard a card so let's just say you discard the cycle card you are rather grade one Obviously, you're going to pass, but the cycle card, let's just say, gets you one. Right. Draw your turn, and then let's just say, you know, you, you take damage. You kill the Ophelia. Uh, you draw for turn again. Somehow, you get, like, another cycle card. Cool. Discard the cycle card, and then you ride your grade two. So now, pretty much here, uh, you have to put one card from your hand into soul to search for your gem. So here, it's a little bit tricky, just because you don't actually really know what to put in. Um, and generally if I don't know what to put in you just put in the gem for another gem because having a gem in soul is always good Right, so you put in the gem find a gem from your deck add it to hand And then here what you want to do is you want to call the Elvira's to the back row or you can promote it to the front row and put a Yuika, but it depends on which Riga you want to save, right? So what I generally do is just place the Elvira first then play the gem which draws you one right so let's just say it draws you into another gem uh, and then the vanguard will draw you into one and then both Elvira's will draw you uh, will draw you into two but the thing is is that Elvira only works on grade three so essentially 
what you want to do is that that play there when you have the double Elvira is when you're on grade three, but essentially you're you're up like what plus two cards, which is crazy, right? So in the early, you want to play something like this, where you have eight, ten, and then oh well, eight, fifteen, and then twenty-eight, right? This hits over a defensive trigger, and your opponent has to like fifteen and hit a defensive to guard this. Um, but essentially, when you're hitting for 8, right, if your opponent hit, doesn't hit a damage trigger, the 15 is actually really hard to guard because they can't just throw a 15 and no pass it, right? Which means that if you check a trigger here, then yeah, your opponent's kind of screwed. Then you go 28, right? This is like your baseline of play. Now, you could also contemplate putting the Yuika in the front if you want to protect the Elvira and you don't really care about the Romano because essentially when you ride next turn, right? So let's just say, you you know, you draw into one um, and then let's just say they kill this, right? And let's just say, you know, you took a damage or whatever. Uh, generally, the turns for Willista, you need two CB. So as long as you have two CB, you're like pretty good. Uh, so, you know, you draw for turn and then you discard one. So let's just say you discard this and then ride the uh, grade three. And then when you ride the grade three, let's just say, you know, you draw an extra card or whatever. Cool. Off that. Uh, let's just say, you know, the soul is, uh, you know, a bit fresh. Um, and we got the goods, right? So here, this is where, you know, it's a little bit tricky as to what to discard. Uh, you kind of want to discard, like, I mean, we have like two grade threes, right? So you discard this to find your gem, right? And then here, this is when, like, you play the Elvira. Right, you can protect the Elvira and then play this, you know, draw a card and then, you know, uh, draw a few other cards like draw one here, draw one here. So like your hand is like pretty beefed, right? Um, and then obviously, you know, you soul blast this and then top five call two. Um, and then here, you don't feel bad about calling a trigger because essentially what the trigger does is that it bottom decks because of Ophelia anyway. So let's just say, you know, you find an Ophelia off it, right? And then that's pretty much your board, right? So let's just move the hand here. So that's pretty much your board. So what you want to do, uh, depending on like how it is, uh, you attack with this first, uh, attack with this second, and you usually want to boost the Ophelia because the Ophelia itself gains plus 15 on restand, which compensates for the lost boost on the second time around. Um, unless, you know, you know what your opponent's cards are in, like, their hand later in the game when you're, you know, making sure you card count uh, what cards are in their hand. And then, you know, when you attack with this, then, uh, you know, let's just say, you know, this is after Persona Ride, so you have, like, another copy or whatever. Then uh, you Soul Blast the Grade 3, and you Restand. Generally, in that case, I would keep the booster standing, so you attack with one first, and then restand it so it has the booster. And then afterwards, you know, you count plus one, so plus one, and then restand this. Uh, so yeah, that that's pretty much like how Willista plays. Um, I think the really mo the really important thing about this deck is that you need to keep track of what cards your opponent has in their hand, as well as which lines to boost i think that's really important because if you mistake a way of boosting then depending on like how many nulls your opponent has uh then they force out more cards and i think that's really important so as long as you're keeping track of what like your opponent is you know checking what they're drawing what they've shown you um then you can kind of make adjusted decisions on like whether to boost this column or not um so yeah and as the deck goes like you know further into the game the more you know the more you re-ride um salvaging a gem you know top five core two then your deck actually becomes super compressed and you're just going to be like you know hitting triggers like no tomorrow um so yeah this is pretty much how willista kind of plays there's not really much else to kind of talk about um, other than the fact that this deck is really, really strong, I think this is a deck that you have to test for the BCS season if you want to qualify for Worlds. Um, so yeah, if you guys like this video though, pop a like. And um, yeah, I hope you like you guys like this video. I really like this deck at the moment. Uh, probably one of the funner decks. Um, I tried Gandiva, not really my taste. Um, but you know, it's a meta deck. Have to play it. You know, if it's good, then I have to play it. Have to qualify for Worlds somehow. 
Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoy this deck. Uh, probably a deck that I, I would consider running. Um, but now that Minerva is, you know, a valid option, I might consider that as well. Um, but yeah, hope you guys liked this video. Pop a like, comment down below what you guys think of Willista and the new support that it got in the Festival Collection. How did you guys like this? Do you guys like any other decks in the Festival Collection? Let me know down in the comments below. I might consider them for a deck profile in the near future. If you guys haven't already, click subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.